news story. This is the New York Times and FoxNews.com both. The news of this day could have come out of the, uh, the appendices of the book. I mean, this is how on target the book is, but this is how our reality, how severe our reality is. It's the Savage Nation to the phones. Leo is up next listening to our uh, D.C. radio home, WMAL. Leo, welcome to the program, sir. Hello. Hey, Austin. Thanks for having me on again. Yes, sir. Um, I've been pretty vocal about this here in the D.C. area when I call in in the morning, and I I truly believe we've reached that critical mass. Um, Next week is going to be a turning point in our nation's history. I really believe that, that if she walks out of there without shackles on, um, the media is going to push this through. Um, They're not going to find anything grave that she's done, um, and she'll be the nominee, and then they'll push her through to be the president. And I said, that's when our nation will have ceased to exist. The key to all this is the day that she is arrested, you will know because I'll be out there in the streets dancing up and down, um, clapping, yelling, screaming like it's New Year's Eve. But she needs to go to prison. Any normal American listening to this radio station and hearing this, if we had done that, anything facsimile resembling close to what she's done, we would be sitting our butt in jail right now, a mm-hmm. sentence. And she is still allowed to get up and stump and debate for the highest office in our country. I, listen, Leo, I'm, I'm with you. I hear you. This is very disturbing. Here's here's what is uh, perhaps even more disturbing. I'm not uh, I'm not uh, minimizing what you're saying here. What's even more disturbing to me, or at least equally as disturbing, is that this woman is st- this individual. Forget her gender. This person. As, as grossly negligent as she has become, she is still the odds-on favorite of millions of Americans. And we cannot expect the Congress to act appropriately if we the people don't have a clue. It's the Savage Nation. I'm Austin Hill in for Dr. Michael Savage. Back in moments. Don't go anywhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. <laughs> The Savage Nation rolls on. Dr. Michael Savage out today. Don't freak out. He is okay. Just traveling a bit. He'll be back early next week. I am author and columnist Austin Hill. Glad to be sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage today. Take down our number. It's toll-free, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. By the way, navigate over to michaelsavage.com sooner rather than later. I'll tell you that uh, just as sure as his new book, Government Zero, is uh, spot on with the day's news. As I was pointing out earlier, we now know from foxnews.com as of today, Mrs. Clinton, our beloved Hillary Rodham Clinton, uh, the uh, the uh, one that uh, is entitled to the presidency, just ask her. She's being investigated by the FBI for uh, possible violations of the Federal Espionage Act under the Gross Negligence Clause. That's big stuff. That spells government zero that spells no strategy for national security in a, and and by the way you can order the book at michaelsavage.com it's right there we've got this headline at michaelsavage.com palestinians torch the tomb of biblical hero joseph if you are a jew if you are a christian even if you just have some kind of I don't know, vague, vague identity with the Judeo-Christian ethic and Western civilizations. This should matter. And yet, even on this day, President Barack Hussein Obama, peace be upon him, and we'll have audio on this later in this episode of The Savage Nation. President Obama was making the moral equivalent today of Israel and the Palestinians. And uh, waxing philosophical and saying, oh, gee whiz, Israel has a right to to defend itself. But, you know, those Palestinians really have a good point here. Even as, as they go about destroying historical sites, historical structures that are absolutely part and parcel and relevant to the Judeo-Christian ethic, to Judaism, to Christianity, to Western civilization. 
God help us. You can find that news story at uh, michaelsavage.com. If I sound a bit angry, a bit passionate, I am. And it's an honor to sit in for Dr. Michael Savage today. Here's the number. It's 855-400-7282. 855-400-7282. Uh, to the phones, Jen is up next in the San Francisco Bay Area listening to KSFO. Jim, welcome to the program. Hello. Hello. I think she's the heir apparent, and things will never get bad enough. You know, I was watching the debates the other night, and I see up there winking, blinking, and nod, and then there's Hillary and uh, Bernie Sanders, who is not just hands or a football with this email comment that he made. It's like, yeah, the Americans are sick of your... No, uh, no, 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 no. I not only am not sick about uh, of hearing about it, I understand that there are at least 32 pending lawsuits regarding her emails at the State Department. And I would love to see the uh, this all come to fruition in a court of law, mm, you know, a high circuit court. That wouldn't bother me one bit. Besides mm. that, the, Repub- the uh, Democrat Party is absolutely run by women. You think she's going anywhere? She's going to get the biggest pass ever. That's what I think. But I sure hope I'm wrong. I uh, Listen, and Jen, I appreciate the call. Great to have you listening on 560 KSFO in San Francisco. Listen, I, she will get a pass with most. I, I, there's, there's no doubt that uh, that Jen in the Bay Area there, she's in Palo Alto, California, apparently. There's no doubt that Mrs. Clinton will get a pass with most. She'll get a pass with... And think about this for a moment. Let's just take a step back here for a moment. I played that audio soundbite. We can get to this later, maybe before the hour's over with. We can play the line of questioning uh, from the gentleman local TV news anchor at KUSA-TV in Denver. This young guy... Uh, puts her on the spot and suggests that maybe she should have, Mrs. Clinton, maybe it should have occurred to her that uh, shuffling off a highly classified email data onto a private server could have compromised the nation's security. You don't hear that line of questioning for Anderson, from Anderson Cooper at CNN. No, no. Anderson Cooper is a supporter of the Clinton initiatives. How dare he put dear Mrs. Clinton on the spot because, you know, he's a part of the Clinton initiatives gang. And then, of course, there's George Stephanopoulos, who is a financial contributor to the Clinton initiatives and to the Clinton campaign. Both of these characters masquerade as objective journalists, just getting to the facts, just bringing you the news story. But they don't dare ask the questions that this one courageous guy in Denver did. Look, I, I, I guess part of what I'm getting at here is to say, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm here for a few hours today, guest hosting the Savage Nation, honored to fill the chair of Dr. Michael Savage. And I am grateful to him. Thank you, Dr. Savage, for finding me fit to do this today. Thanks for asking. Honored to be here. But just as sure as I, your fellow American, has something to say about this, let me just try to persuade you to consider this. We cannot count on the dominant news media in our country to do this work. You and I have got to get to michaelsavage.com. We've got to listen to this show. We've got to corroborate different bits of information, different news items. We've got to put the, uh, the pieces together. We've got to connect the dots. Because the Anderson Coopers and the George Stephanopoulos of the world, they certainly will not. And that's why I posed the question the way I did. Will a critical mass, a sufficient number of Americans, regardless of one's skin color or gender or sexual orientation or ethnic heritage or geographical location, will a significant number, a, a sufficient number of people, connect the dots and realize we're in trouble. We are at government zero, as Dr. Savage's book title says. We are at the place where there's zero strategy for protecting the citizenry, upholding our liberties, and combating the bad guys. there's, There's no firewall there. And in fact, our U.S. federal government, starting with El Presidente, Our U.S. federal government is undermining our liberties and endangering us every step of the way. Can we get to that point where a sufficient number of Americans, whoever we are and wherever we're at, recognize what's going on here? That's why I pose the question. It's 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Gino, up next, listening to us on WABC in New York. Gino, what's up? 
The pain has to be felt by the current crop of millennials because if they don't start feeling the pain, it doesn't go to their brain. These people have been trained from kindergarten all the way through law school that mommy and daddy baby boomer and mommy and daddy Gen Xer are going to give them everything they want. That's why if they don't feel the pain, if we, the stupid suckers who have been paying for this, is a slacker generation to get their act together, they're not going to vote for conservatives. They don't bother to listen to talk radio. They never listen or watch Fox News Channel. They're perfectly content to think that everything's going to come their way because these brain-dead, trained Bolsheviks are going to think that they are going to run the show, and eventually they will. But if nobody's paying the taxes and nobody's going to work and you got illegal aliens taking their jobs away from them and taking their money away from them, maybe a few of these millennials will come to the realization the way I did 35 to try to get a decent wage and a decent living. When they feel the pain, maybe and just maybe they might turn. But I doubt it because we the baby boomers and the Gen Xers especially have screwed up the next two or three millennials and generations. They are the entitlement crowd. They're never going to go along with conservatism. They're always going to rely on Bolshevism and socialism. And don't be surprised if Bernie Sanders pulls the shocking upset of all upsets. And ex- well, listen, it could, it could happen. And, and you're right about that. And Gino, I appreciate the call and I appreciate the point. Oh, yes, pain, pain is very instructive, is it not? Pain can be a good thing if one responds to it appropriately and allows pain to be your teacher. And let me tell you, to his point, it is the millennial generation that is feeling the pain of the Obama economy in ways that Gen Xers are not and in ways that baby boomers are only starting to feel the pain. Let me piece that together for you. The Obama economy has brought to bear this horribly sluggish economy. Listen, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, you're in D.C., you're in New York, things are pretty good. And most of the financial news media and business and economic reporting that goes on in this country, most of that news content, I'm here to tell you as a fill-in host on the Savage Nation, most of that news content emanates from Wall Street, from New York. Okay, but between San Francisco and New York, there's this whole vast unwashed mass of us that uh, we live in what's commonly referred to as flyover country. Right. And uh, no, it's not just all fabulous in flyover country. The lack of job creation in this country. And by the way, the boomers and the millennials and the Xers collectively as a mass, our country has voted for this nonsense. This wasn't just imposed upon us. We asked for Obamacare. Maybe you didn't vote for it. I didn't vote for it. But we asked for this insanity with the way perhaps we didn't vote, didn't care to go and vote. I mean, seriously, you know, if I could uh, just jump off here, you really think we'd be worse off with President Romney right now? Anyway, I digress. We've asked for this. We've asked for this government control over the economy. We've asked for what we commonly call in economic terms a planned and controlled economy that doesn't incentivize companies to hire people. And the uh, millennials are feeling the pain of that the worst. Now, the question is, and to Gino's point here, pain can be instructive, but the question is, do the millennials, the millennial generation, do they have sufficient critical thinking capacities to actually connect the dots and realize, hey, no job, mountains of student loan debt, I followed all the rules, I jumped through all the hoops, I got a college degree, I don't have anything to do in the economy. Maybe my government lied to me. Maybe my government school misled me. Maybe Barack Hussein Obama really didn't mean it when he said he'd take care of me. Will millennials connect the dots that way? Or are they just in sycophantic fashion going to run around and say, Yeah, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, free college tuition. Sounds good to me. Got to do something. That's the pressure point. That's the big question there. And I'm not sure which direction that's headed, quite frankly. 
Here's our number. It's 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. It's the Savage Nation. I'm author and columnist Austin Hill. Glad to be sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage today. Radu is listening to WMAL in Washington, D.C. Thanks for holding, Radu. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant to this country. I, it's very important to me to say that I'm a legal immigrant to this country. I came here yes, 36 years ago. I lived under socialism and I lived under communism for the first 16 years of my life. I lived in Eastern Europe. It's a privilege to come here and uh, 